people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Hello viewers, I'm your host Shivangi Mishra with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to France last week marked 25 years of strategic partnership between the two countries. The two countries have lately recognized the immense potential in their alliance, leading to a deepening of their defense ties. Through joint ventures and collaborations, India has been acquiring advanced military equipment and technology from France, significantly enhancing its defense capabilities. The French defense industry has emerged as a trusted partner, offering cutting edge solutions in various domains. Beyond defense cooperation, the India-France relationship extends to our cultural exchanges, educational collaborations and economic partnerships. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi was in Paris last week to mark the 25th anniversary of the strategic partnership between India and France and participate in the Bastille Day Parade where an Indian Army contingent also participated. The event came in line with the unprecedented momentum Delhi Paris ties have gathered especially in the last few years where both sides have stepped up their cooperation across the spectrum. Shared values interests and ambitions have been the key drivers behind this solidifying relationship. Both countries have also emphasized time and time again that they were ready to look into new possibilities for cooperation, innovation and development. Mesdames et Messieurs, le 14 juillet, la nation se retrouve dans la solennité du défilé, dans l'insouciance des balles populaires, dans l'émerveillement des feux d'artifice. Et demain, nous serons dans ce contexte heureux d'accueillir l'Inde comme invité d'honneur de notre défilé. C'est un géant de l'histoire du monde qui aura un rôle déterminant pour notre avenir. C'est aussi un partenaire stratégique et un pays ami. Et je le disais, j'ai beaucoup parlé de nos partenaires européens, de nos alliés. Nous avons su ces dernières années renforcer, avec l'Inde en particulier, avec les Émirats Arabes Unis aussi, et avec quelques autres, des alliances inédites. Thanks to important defense agreements and increased military-to-military -military contact, India's strategic relationship with France has touched fresh heights in recent years. France ranked as India's second largest defense supplier from 2017 to 2021. It was due to the introduction of the French Scorpion conventional submarines, which are being produced in India under a 2005 technology transfer agreement and the acquisition of 36 Rafale fighters by the Indian Air Force. Additionally, the Tata Group and Airbus have partnered to produce C-295 tactical transport aircraft in Vadodara, Gujarat. With the early commerce of USD 12.42 billion in 2021-2022, France has become one of the India's most important commercial partners. With a cumulative investment of USD 10.31 billion between April 2000 and June 2022, which accounts for 1.7 of all foreign direct investment inflows into India, France ranks as the 11th largest foreign investor in India. India's demand for permanent membership in the UN Security Council and admission to the nuclear supplier groups are both supported by France. India and France have also committed to expanding their partnership to collaboratively combat climate change. In September 2022, France and India decided to create an Indo-Pacific Trilateral Development Corporation Fund to foster innovative, sustainable solutions for nations in the Indo-Pacific region. The India-France and UAE Trilateral Initiative aims to promote marine security and domain awareness from the east coast of Africa to the far reaches of the Pacific. Observers opine that India and France can also come together to ensure global energy security. Collaboration on clean energy research and development, encouraging the use of renewable energy sources and lowering carbon emissions can all help achieve this. 
the two nations can cooperate in the fields of science and technology such as R&D, innovation and technology transfer. Prime Minister Modi, while addressing the members of the Indian community in France, also urged Indians to actively contribute to building people-to-people -people contact between Indians and French. He also said that people of France must visit India to witness the spectacular growth story of India. हम संकल्प करें हमारी पूरी क्षमता से हमारे अनुभव से हमारे संपर्कों से संबंधों से फ्रांस के नागरिकों को बहुत बड़ी मात्रा में भारत के साथ जोड़े आप जब आए तो उनको भारत लेके आए आप उनको भारत जाने के लिए प्रेरित करें हमारा पीपल टू पीपल कांटेक्ट बढ़ेगा तब सिर्फ टूरिज्म नहीं बनता है वो तो होता ही जाता है लेकिन उससे जो अपने पन का सामर्थ्य पैदा होता है ना वो पीढ़ी दर पीढ़ी की एक अनमोल विरासत बन जाती है सम से द पार्टनरशिप बिटवीन इंडिया एंड फ्रांस इज पॉज्ड फॉर स्पेक्टेकुलर जर्नी फॉरवर्ड एंड बोथ कुड कॉम्प्लीमेंट ईच अदर इन मोर वेज then what looks possible from diplomatic perspectives moving on as afghan landscape grows challenging for women with each passing day there has emerged a development that could provide a sigh of relief the taliban have been called out and condemned for discrimination and crackdown on women by people and organizations across the world has permitted a religious seminary in kabul to teach some subjects to women while it cannot fully compensate for injustices inflicted by the taliban this step could be a glimmer of hope for women who have gone above and beyond permissible limits to ensure education for themselves The return of the Taliban rule in Afghanistan in 2021 also marked the return of the oppressed and disempowered life of women in the country. Unforeseen challenges coupled with Taliban's repressive anti-women laws pushed their lives towards a downward spiral. And the situation has become so grim that the permission of teaching some subject at just one seminary in capital Kabul has been dubbed by many as a glimmer of hope according to the head of the religious seminary an agreement has been reached with the taliban led ministries of education and hajj islamic affairs and endowment allowing them to provide girls with a modern and technical education سونز شتا ده خو لله الحم من خپل ژوند ور توقف کړی ده وخت مو رکو زحمت مو باسو تر څو د غزینه خلق فارغ شي نجونو ته خدمت شي دلته خصوصا هغه خزي چې تعلیم نه وي برخه پاتې Despite the facilities capacity to train 1200 girls there were no female attendees for a discussion on women's education a separate meeting for women was scheduled near the seminary men were not allowed to attend دا یو خی اقدام دی او د خیر او زنی د پاره خی اقدام دی مونږ ان شاء الله د دغه سی اقدام لا تړي هر وخت او په هر زمان کې Despite the obstacles of maintaining such schools Hadia Jabarkhel an English teacher claimed that Afghan women and girls are devoted to fighting for their right to an education According to experts the Afghan population will continue to be segregated along gender lines which will worsen the situation for more women many professional and educated women previously departed the nation to escape tyranny when you want to change the world you have to start the change from yourself so first of all i was really like hopeless for this uh, region and uh, for taliban's like um, government but then when i thought with myself and i come like i continued my studies the taliban were already infamously cruel towards women during their earlier rule between 1996 and 2001 the situation has arguably worsened 
Today, Afghanistan's women and girls are required to adhere to strict dress code and are not permitted to travel more than 46 miles without a mehram or male chaperone. They are compelled to stay at home. The UN says that all over Afghanistan, women report feeling invisible, isolated, suffocated and living in prison-like conditions. Many are unable to have their basic needs met without access to employment or aid, including access to medical health care and psychological support, in particular for victims of violence, including sexual violence. Afghanistan, which has faced decades-long war, has a large number of unmarried, divorced or widowed women, who are at an increased risk of persecution due to the Taliban diktat. No rights for women mean more international sanctions on Afghanistan. Since the US withdrawal, the Islamic nation of 28 million people has been facing the worst humanitarian crisis and food insecurity. As long as the Taliban remain in power, the future of Afghan women remains bleak. Moving on. Threats and conflicts in the globe now affect not just one nation, but also all of humanity and peace on earth. To talk about finding a peaceful, constructive way to resolve disputes, wars and terrorism, Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdul Karim Al Issa, the Secretary General of the Muslim World League, has joined us on the show today to share his perspective on the current global disputes and geopolitical challenges. Welcome Mr. Al Issa. Today, we are witnessing a growing number of conflicts and wars across the world. Many countries are on the brink of destruction because of these conflicts. So what, according to you, are the reasons behind these conflicts and what do you think is the solution? وإذا كانت الحروب نشأت تحت أي ذريعة فإن هذه الذرائع يجب أن تنتهي إلى حوار ومن ثم إلى السلام بين الجميع ونحن نؤيد دوما أن يكون هناك تفاهم وعندنا قناعة تامة بأنه عندما يكون الجميع على طاولة واحدة من الحوار فإنهم ب الحكمة التي يفترض أن تكون بينهم سينتهون إلى تفاهم ومن ثم إلى سلام نحن دوما ندعو إلى السلام ونبذل كل جهودنا حول العالم من أجل تحقيق هذا السلام في عالمنا والوئام في المجتمعات الوطنية تبدأ هذه الحروب أحيانا بسوء فهم تبدأ من البعد عن بعض تبدأ من تقديرات خاطئة تبدأ ربما من مخاوف قد تكون هناك مخاوف صحيحة ولكن تنتهي في النهاية إلى لقاءات يفترض أن تكون وإلى حوارات يفترض أن تكون إلى تفاهم أيضا يفترض أن يكون حاضرا بين الجميع سعدنا جدا بأن هناك سوء تفاهم انتهى إلى محبة إلى صداقة والتاريخ شاهد على ذلك هناك دول صار بينها حروب شديدة جدا بينها الآن تحالف قوي للغاية عندما انتهى الأمر إلى الحوار إلى الحكمة إلى تغليب منطق السلام تغليب منطق النظر للأبعد إلى الأجيال القادمة وليس النظرة المادية المحدودة الآنية Terrorism now is a global threat and organizations like ISIS, Al-Qaeda, the Taliban and Boko Haram are posing serious concerns for global peace, progress and stability. How do you see the rise of these outfits? Of course, these movements and movements are not only the movements, but the movements are not only the movements. And we always say that the movements are not إنما يمثل أديولوجيته الإرهابية المتطرفة هذه التنظيمات نحن نحاربها ونسعى إلى أن نوضح حقيقتها للعالم بأسره لدى المملكة العربية السعودية أكبر وأقوى المنصات العالمية لمواجهة 
الأفكار المتطرفة والإرهابية وتعمل على ذلك بقوة وحققت مكاسب كبيرة جدا وضربت هذا التطرف بأفكاره المنعزلة التي تعتبر شاذة عن الفكر الإسلامي وتعتبر مزورة للمفاهيم الإسلامية ضربت هذه الأفكار ضربات قوية جدا ولا تزال تواصل ضرباتها نحن في رابطة العالم الإسلامي نعمل كذلك لمواجهة هذه الأفكار نعمل على اجتثاث اقتلاع جذور هذه الأفكار لأننا نؤمن بأن القضاء الكامل على الفكر لا يكون إلا بمواجهته الفكرية هذه الأفكار لم تقم على قوة عسكرية لم تقم على تاريخ وإرث سياسي إنما قامت على أفكار متطرفة يجب اجتثاث هذه الأفكار المتطرفة نحن ضدها نحن نحاربها وسننتصر عليها إن شاء الله Saudi Arabia and India have deep-rooted links including the strong edifice of history on which the relations are built. How does your visit help strengthen these long-established relations between the two countries? I will talk about this relationship as a Saudi relationship. This relationship is strong, strong and strong. It has been developed and developed and developed. And between the parties, there is a strong relationship. يزداد يوما بعد يوم وسمعت أيضا من فخامة رئيس الوزراء حول هذه العلاقة وتحدث عنها باهتمام كبير جدا وهذه العلاقة كما قلت هي لصالح البلدين وأيضا تنم هذه العلاقة عن التفاهم الكبير بين البلدين لتحقيق أهداف البلدين المشتركة وأحب أن أؤكد على أن لقائي بفخامة رئيس الوزراء كان لقاء رائعا جدا وتناول عددا من الموضوعات المهمة وكنت سعيدا جدا بهذا اللقاء. Thank you, Mr. Alisa. Time now for Asia this week. The stories from across the continent. Tens of thousands of Israelis took to the streets of Tel Aviv in protest as Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's hard-right coalition pressed ahead with a justice bill that has opened the deepest splits seen in the country in decades. A day after Parliament passed a key element in the bill, which aims to curb the power of the Supreme Court, crowds of flag-waving protesters stopped morning traffic in major intersections and on highways nationwide. Footage showed protesters carrying placards, waving Israeli flags and chanting for democracy. The drive by Netanyahu's nationalist religious coalition to change the justice system has led to unprecedented protest, stirred concern for Israel's democratic health among Western allies and bruised the economy. The Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, launched the Chandrayaan-3 mission from Satish Dhawan Space Center from Sri Harikota on July 14. With the launch of Chandrayaan-3, India reaffirmed its commitment to unraveling the innumerous mysteries of the lunar surface. Over a course of 42 days, the spacecraft would perform a number of maneuvers before the final touchdown on the lunar surface. The invaluable data gathered from this expedition will further contribute to the Indian scientists' understanding of the moon's evolution and the mysteries of the cosmos. This launch also showcases India's growing collaboration with international space agencies and its emboldening stature in space exploration. South Korean lawmakers led a rally in Tokyo alongside Japanese residents to protest against the planned release of treated radioactive water from the Fukushima nuclear plant. Ten South Korean opposition lawmakers, including Yang Yi Won Young and Park Byom Ki, joined a dozen Japanese protesters and chanted slogans in front of the Japanese Prime Minister's office in Tokyo. The International Atomic Energy Agency IAEA, approved Japan's plan to release the treated radioactive water from the damaged plant 
into the ocean when its chief Rafael Grossi visited Japan last week before heading to Seoul. Concerns over the plant's safety have sprouted within South Korea, Japan and around the region. Even as South Korea's government said it respected the IAEA's report and that its own analysis had found the release will not have any meaningful impact on its waters. Now we take you to Amarnath Yatra, one of the most revered and toughest Hindu pilgrimages which holds immense religious importance among devotees of Lord Shiva, who undertake this arduous trek to seek blessings and witness the sacred Amarnath cave nestled amidst the breathtaking Himalayas in Jammu and Kashmir. Let's take a glance. The annual journey to the Amarnath cave in Jammu and Kashmir began amid prayers being recited by devotees and loud chants of Bam Bam Bole in the name of Hindu god Shiva. There, the devotees worship an ice phallic symbol called Shivling, believed to be the symbol of Lord Shiva. Considered to be one of the most challenging Himalayan treks in India, the Amarnath pilgrimage is dedicated to Hindu Lord Shiva the God of Destruction. Amarnath cave is regarded as one of the most holy places among Hindus since it is thought to be an adopt of Lord Shiva and his spouse Parvati. Every year, a pilgrimage to the holy site takes place in the month of July, which is believed to instill the purification of one's mind. Devotees take two different routes to finish this toughest trek. One is the 36-kilometer five-day route via Jammu to Pahalgaon, and the other one is a 14-kilometer difficult hike from Jammu to Baltal. बहुत ही अच्छा लग रहा है, बहुत हिम्मत आ रही है सबको देखकर, बस अब बाबा के अच्छे से दर्शन हो जाए, यही प्रार्थना है, सबके अच्छे से दर्शन हो जाए. During this pilgrimage. The whole trek echoes with devotional songs of Lord Shiva. Devotees were seen riding horses and being carried on makeshift palanquins while most chose to walk towards the cave. Due to the distance that pilgrims must travel to reach the 3,888-meter elevation of Amarnath Shrine, the local government welcomes the devotees with open arms and sets up various community kitchens and medical camps while the pilgrims are on their way to and from the cave for their convenience. You have seen it yourself. We have seen it with all the heart of our heart. I am not here in the whole city. All the people who have come out of the city, there are different people who have come out of the city. वो सारे निकल कर आए माए माए बहने नौजवान बुजुर्ग और जो हमारी कश्मीरियत है उस कश्मीरियत को मद्देनजर रखते हुए हमने श्री अमरनाथ जी यात्री के जो भी सारे यात्री थे उनको यहाँ से तय दिल से हमने यहाँ पर उनका खैर मकदम किया वेलकम किया। Furthermore, a group of 33 Amarnath pilgrims from neighbouring Nepal received a warm welcome by Jammu and Kashmir administration. They created a great atmosphere with drum beating and also put garlands on the pilgrims. Sweets were distributed among the pilgrims. Some pilgrims were dancing during the journey. We came from Nepal and we came from the first day. We came from the first day. People are very good. The people are very good. The country is very good. The people are very good. We are very good. We are very good. As per Hindu mythology, Lord Shiva chose this cave to reveal the secrets of immortality and the formation of the universe to his spouse, Goddess Parvati. And this Amarnath Yatra pilgrimage is an ideal fusion of adventure and faith. Hindus from across the world undertake this holy pilgrimage every year. With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care. People have to live in, in unity. 
we are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect.